Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, we are here with the Age of Overlord OTS Championship Case Tournament winner, Austin Newmeyer. He played Manadiums. He's gonna go over this deck profile for you guys right now. All right, so, Manadium best deck, first off. Second off, let's go over the cards. Okay, so, uh, three Ream Heart, clearly the best card in the deck, IMO, and three Meek. These, you know, when you see other Manadium deck profiles, these are the only ratios that are kind of like set in stone right now. Um, and for good reason, you don't need Torrid or anything. Um, Meek, just Meek is fine. And then Ream Heart, you know, Agob gave us the one card uh, Ream Heart combo. So it's part of the reason why the deck's performing so well right now. But uh, yeah, this is pretty standard ratios for those. Um, and then I play two right card. I'll just lay out the rest to uh, Vsauce, Star Frost, and uh, Triple Samsara. So the ratios for these are by no means set in stone. You know, there's anywhere from like one to three Rikart, uh, I guess two to three Star Frost, and then anywhere from zero to three Samsara. Um, so my reasoning for this lineup, um, I guess I'll start with Samsara, because to me, um, this is kind of the X factor that the deck got in Agob. I mean, besides the one card combo, of course, with the extra deck, but. So this card, when you're going through your combos, you need a Visus, you need Meek, and you need two 15, 21 stat lines. Um, and you know, there's a million lines, but this is either Visus or a 15, 21. So it kind of, fixes your hands, you know, depending on what you need. And it's also uh, probably the best extender for the deck, um, at least going first, right? Like you can get um, Vist Shield. It's not that uncommon for this to get Vist Shield. You know, you shuffle it back, summon this, now you have Starfrost again. Um, also, it looks awesome. It looks dope. So three of these, you could probably go down to two. I board out one uh, occasionally, because going second, um, a lot of times they'll try and deny you access to Starfrost at all. So if you have no way to get this engraved, then this can become dead. Um, but once this is engraved or banished or anywhere really, this becomes basically the best extender that the deck could uh, ask for. So that's my reasoning here. Um, you could play three Rykart. Um, going second is probably the best normal summon because it's you can pop it um, to summon Heart, which is pretty important um, and also by itself it's one card like level 10 plus uh, SP and a pinch um, so it's not like you'd be wrong for playing three but I'm at 41 as it is so this is kind of the lineup that I landed on um, yeah so that's that and then I play the Prisma because I play the Hero Lives package um, so a more common package to play is Fenrir plus um, Scarecash, and that is also a good package. Um, I don't think you'd, you know, if you don't want to play this, I don't think you'd be losing too many percentage points going with the other package. Um, for me though, especially playing the three Samsara, right, like um, this summon this, this dumps Visus without normal summoning, and now this is live for the rest of the turn. So. No matter how they decide to interact with you from that point out, um, this is live and, you know, going second especially, um, this deck just kills people, right? You, you push lethal pretty pretty easily um, and being able to put this out without normal summoning, dumping Visus without normal summoning, and then also having this as a Visus or a 1521 without normal summoning, um, it's just it usually overloads the interaction that they that um, your opponent would have. So I'm a huge fan of this. Uh, the other thing going first, um, if you play this, you might get a good read on whether they have Ash or not, depending how they themselves react. Um, also, they might think you're on Heroes, so they might Ash it, which in general is pretty good for this deck because there's so many Ash targets. Um, but if it goes through, then you make um, Baron on summon five without normal summoning. So, um, to me, basically being able to, you can't totally ignore Nib, but there's, between there being 
a ton of lines to get Baron on five. Um, and then now this package to do it without even using your normal. Um, that's the only hand trap that this deck truly, really struggles against is Droll, of course. And then now that SP is a thing, um, it still hurts to get Droll, but it's not in the end of the world like it used to be. Um, so yeah, I would suggest trying that package out if you haven't already. And then speaking of Droll, play three Droll, three Ash. Um, in the past, you saw people not wanting to play Ash because with the field spell Calarium, um, it is a tuner, so it has the potential to make this a 1621, which has anti-synergy there. Um, but with all the ways that you saw that I can get access to Visus, the amount of times that that actually comes up where this is stopping your own uh, progression of your plays is, it's pretty minimal, and then Especially when you pair that with the upside that this has against things like Rescue Ace. Um, just the format in general, you know, in, in the finals I ashed a, uh, an Unchained player's trap that they had set and popped. And then that was the end of their turn. So, I don't really need to explain Ash to you guys, but uh, don't be afraid that this is a tuner, is all I'm saying. Um, so that's it for the monsters. Spells, you got the uh, field spell lineup. 3 Calarium, 2, 1. Um, you can play one of this. This is always a 3 of, I don't really think I need to explain that. Um, you can play one of this, and then this, I would say, is also optional. Um, my reasoning for 2 and then 1. Um, 1, if you draw 1 and you're only playing 1, of course it feels nice to search the second one. Um, but that's not really the reason. The main reason is, especially if you're getting interacted with and you put up a suboptimal board um, going first, a lot of times, um, you know, you have so many Star Frosts just kind of sitting around, so many ways to search this, that this is like the best possible follow-up that you can go for. Also the pop effect, people, they either forget or they don't really realize it, or if they do realize it, it makes this card so much more of a target for interaction um, and then again with how powerful the deck is and how many one card or one and a half card um, combos you have if they're interacting with this most of the time that's good um, but yeah two for the grind game and then one um, I wasn't playing this for a while it's definitely cuttable I boarded it out a lot but the main reason why I included it is because if your only engine is uh, Calarium or like Calarium Abscission and then you, that's your only engine, having this makes your end board much much stronger just um, the way the combo line works because if you don't have this you can end on like it's like Baron plus a counter trap um, which is not nothing and especially with the hand trap lineup that we have you know you can still get there but I decided I wanted this to make a stronger end board if this was my only engine that I opened. So that's the field spell lineup. Uh, and then the Manadium spells, you got two Obsidian, one Imagining. This is probably one of the best cards in the deck, but it's a hard month per turn, of course, so you don't want to clog, so two's fine. Um, imaginings, I would say it's also cuttable, but the nightmare scenario of having two Meek in hand when you need one in deck is enough to get me to play this at least as a search target to sometimes circumvent that so that's that and then two arrival uh this is pretty standard i would say it's not once per turn either at least for the relevant effect so um, two arrival and then one called by one terraforming run rota um, these don't need explained i wouldn't say this needs explained either um it's ash hits droll pretty good um, and then three imperm one reframing um, I really wanted nine hand traps I would say this is a hand trap format over a board breaker format um, and this is internal on talents don't really need to explain imperm um, this uh, you could cut it but with Typhon existing you need you need an answer to Typhon because every deck Pretty much every deck has access to Typhon. So this at the very least is a searchable way to out that. So I don't think 
you you know going second you can board it out of course but i don't think you should uh not include this in your main deck if you're playing Vanadium, in my in my opinion um so that's the main deck it's 41 um we've got an extra two light heart for the links um i i want to just play one of this but if people are going to keep imperming it or keep ashing it um then two just gets them right because it's not uh once per turn to summon this and search so yeah and then i guess it kind of goes along with the two recophobia um in terms of having follow-up for next turn if you have a softer than optimal board um so two light hearts good and then i play cross sheep that's standard for the combos then i play two little knight um <clears throat> this extra deck it's you can basically play anything <laughs> just about anything in the game this deck can get access to um so it's a little you know flexible right like i've i played appaloosa played you know the dark uh, nightmare unicorn access code package um but I kept running into scenarios where anytime I wanted to make a link, you know, assuming it's not this for your combo, um, Little Knight's just the best and easiest link to go into. So, um, and then I also found times where, you know, you'd make the Little Knight and you have your board. And a lot of times people now will just, you know, summon something, no effect, attack over, and then go main two and continue. Um, and so that's the big reason why I wanted two. Um, you don't have to play two, but you got it i think you should i feel like every time i looked over at your board you had little knight it's just so free in this deck especially um when you have this which is also free you're never pretty much never summoning this without getting the banish so it's um i don't know it's an insane card and the i card love is insane yeah and it works with um let's see well it works with everything but i play chen Ying as well so um it's important to be able to banish something um, with when you want to banish something, you know? So works there, uh, it helps recycle Astral out. If you summon it you, um, and you're going first, you can banish something from your own grave that you can then shuffle back in with, uh, that's the wrong one, shuffle back in with this powder. So that's nice. Um, yeah, Little Knight's kind of nice. And then uh, for the tens, we got Chen Yin, this powder, Baron, and then uh, Chaos Angel. Um, like I said earlier, you know, you can summon anything in this extra deck, so this isn't necessarily the standard 10 lineup. You know, a lot of people just play these two and then we'll have more links. Um, I felt like this was, going first, these cards are the strongest end boards you can make, right? Like, the links are good, um, but going first, Chen Ying's good, but also breaking boards, Chen Ying is insane. Um, also, I've played against Runic, you know. Against Runic, this thing's pretty good. It triggers off of any of their spells, so you have a lot of agency on when you want to trigger this. Um, Chaos Angel's a board breaker, board protector. Enough said. Those are the tens. Um, and then the one card combo, and then probably. There's a lot of good extra deck cards in this deck, but this might be the single most busted one for the deck. Um, yeah. Again, this is why, one of the reasons why as a vague off this deck just got so much stronger. So there's that. Excel, Crimson. Um, I honestly, I don't summon Excel too often, assuming things are going hunky-dory, you know, but when you start getting interacted with, um, this comes up more often, so. Yeah, I don't think you can cut it, but those, and then two Astroloud. Um, you could play three, but then, again, based on what I said earlier, usually, um, assuming your opponent didn't hand trap you and you want to banish the hand trap so this patter can become a negate, you'll just banish one of your Astroloud so you can shuffle it back in and have a virtual third copy. Um, I will say sometimes, because you're playing the Hero Lives package, when you're popping off, um, there are times where either you don't have the third to reveal or um, you could summon the third but you don't have it but that usually if you get to that point something else happened along the way where you're either already way winning or you messed up so two two should be just fine um, so that's it for the extra and then side 
Um, yeah, thrust, and then my thrust targets. Um, so, like I said earlier, Droll is kind of the one hand trap that this deck fears the most. That's pretty well known. Um, and while this doesn't directly counter Droll, you know, there's some people playing uh, Mannequin Cat as a package now to kind of counter Droll in a way. But I felt, I felt Thrust um, was my preferred way because it also lets you search for your board breakers as well or just anything you might want on top of being okay going first if you get hand trapped. So that's kind of gets me into why I'm playing these. Um, so the one downside to doing this route is that there aren't any true like normal traps that fully stop rescue ace or fully stop unchain. Um, this of course, you know, for Chimera, for Tear, uh, purely, it basically ends their turn. So that's obvious for those. These two are more for Ace or Unchained, um, if they hand trap you and you're going first. Um, the objective with these is not to make it so they can't play during their turn. Um, it's basically just so you get to another turn because the more busted your hand is, the more Droll hurts, in, in a way, right? The more searches you have, the more Droll hurts. So um, if you're able to just not die on the crackback, um, your hand's usually pretty loaded and you should be able to push through their board. So um, DD, uh, DDG against Unchained um, really, really hinders their follow-up. You can also board it in against tier. Um, this um, against Ace, again, I'm just trying not to not to die at that point if I get drilled. So um, going first, I would board, you know, two thrust and then whichever um, normal trap I wanted for the matchup. And then this is for purely, of course, going second. And this, I don't have to explain talents. It's pretty busted. Um, so that's the thrust package. And then I played two lightning storm, three evenly, um, going second cards. Um, again, with this deck being so full of like one, one card, one and a half card, two card combos, um, just simplifying the game state and then just like summoning right card and having that go through is usually enough a lot of the time. Um, so there, those are the board breakers and then um, three Drew Swarm against Tear and Unchained. Um, I've been asked why not do one Magna Mutt and two Drew Swarm. Um, and that's because against Unchained specifically, this one is infinitely better, and you want it to be on board before they have Caesar. So let's say you Magnum their Yama, and then Enfys search this at that point, unless their hand is just not good, um, they will have put up a Caesar, and then this is dead in hand. So, and the reason that this is so good against Unchained, right, because the typical board is the Rage or Caesar, and then if this is on board starting your turn you just go battle phase and then they either link it off um and you get to send caesar or they let battle phase go through you outrage and then you continue um so i i could see three and then one magnum but i would never play less than three drew swarm in an unchained uh format so yeah that's it um 41 main 15 15 um Went 6 0 in Swiss and then undefeated. Went out in top eight. So, yeah, the uh, deck's good. Cool. Best day. Huge shout out to Austin. Thanks so much for the deck profile. And uh, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe if you support the channel. Mm -hmm.